Hi there, my name is Dylan Walker. I'm the Advanced Technical Support Engineer for Schneider Electric Telemetry Products. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Series E Configurator software and how to use it to configure the I.O. of a 535E SCADA Pack RTU. Most of the procedure I'm going to show you is applicable to all the SCADA Pack RTU range. To start Configurator, go to the Start menu and select SCADA Pack E Configurator. Uh, today we're going to read the configuration from the RTU using the USB. All of the communication is going to be done via USB, so there's no need to set up any communication parameters for this project. Select the I.O. folder on the left hand side of the configurator and the SCADA Pack I.O. page. Sometimes when you read the configuration, the modules will be automatically added, but they're not now, so we're going to add the modules. Uh, select the 6601 composite I.O. module. You can see that the address is set to zero. We're going to leave this because we're using the I.O. board that is attached to our processor. If you're using remote I.O., you're going to want to change this so that each address is unique so that you're able to target each separate I.O. device easily. Leave the rest of the parameters as default and select OK. Now add a second module you're going to add the 6201 digital I.O. board. These are the I.O. on the actual processor of the 535E on the top rack. Uh, now you can see that your physical I.O. has been created and it correlates to the physical points on the skater pack. Now we're going to have to map this I.O. to DMP3 points. So just type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for DIs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 um, just so it's easy to keep track of their point numbers and write the configuration to the skater pack. Once the configuration is written, open the points folder, go into binary points and you can see that your physical points have been mapped to DMP3 points here. Return to skater pack IO page and we're going to finish off the mapping of the physical points to the DMP3 points. So just type in, you can type in whatever numbers you want, but these are pretty logical. And do the same for the top rack I.O. But we're going to make these 101 and 102 uh, because we cannot duplicate the same DMP3 point number. So they will have to be different from the 6601 composite I.O. board. Write the configuration again and check out your analog points page and binary points page to make sure they have updated. Now that you've created the point, we're going to look at a few of the properties. Uh, the important ones are the point number and the point type, which is created automatically for 6601 inputs. The point class uh, is local, but if you want to pass this information through to a SCADA, you have to make it a class type. Uh, the rest of it is not too important for now. The analog points are a little bit more interesting. They've got uh, some of the same properties as binary, but you can also create a raw minimum and maximum scale as well as engineering minimax and you can set alarm limits. So now we're going to create our own point. When you do this you can either create a range or a single point uh, but now you have to select your point type. We're not going to talk about derived points in this tutorial because we'll cover that in the Modbus scanner tutorial. For this point we're going to select system and point number of 50,005. This point correlates to the system point which represents the 6601 I.O. version firmware. And the static object type should be 16-bit analog in according to the help file. Now open your point browser and start creating some of the points we want to look at. So I'll create a couple of binary ins and analog ins and binary outs. I have an input simulator connected to my skater pack so some of the results that you see are going to be different from mine. But the results you get from controlling your binary outputs should be the same. So the first binary ins are going to be 1 and 2 on your 6601 module. The analog ins will be also from the 6601 module and the outs as well. The last 
binary out will be from the top module and the last analog point is the system point you created. So you probably don't have all these numbers in here yet, but just select the read button and all your values will update. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create a comment for a point now. This is just to put in a bit of a point description and this will come straight through to the point browser. Now that you've read your values, you should be able to see that the point 50,005 matches your IO version firmware. And you can now start playing with your binary outputs. So write a 1 to some of them and see if an LED comes on in your skater pack. If it doesn't, go to controller settings and select the LED power always on button and then write the RTU configuration. Once it's written and you've confirmed that the binary points were actually written to the skater pack, you should see the LEDs come on. Thank you for watching. If this video does not have all the information on communicating with the skater pack RTU that you need, you can learn more from the skater pack eConfigurator user manual, which can be found online at the address you see on the page in front of you.